Welcome to the FIBAN Founders Club event. This is the first one of the year, and we are going to have an exciting event today. So today we have uh, a guest from our partner. Uh, so recently we just joined up with Valkea. Valkea is one of our partners now, and, and from there we have a speaker. And uh, yeah, excited to be here and uh, and and organizing these events. My name is Antti Viit and I'll be hosting this event. But all right, let's get started. And, and today we have guest uh, Emmy Kaipio, Startup Pilots and Partnership Man Manager uh, at Fortum. So Emmy, you have a lot of background uh, with startup and, and, and big company piloting. So uh, would you like to introduce yourself and, and how did you end up uh, at Fortum? Yes, sir. Uh, thanks a lot, Antti, for the introduction and for the opportunity to be here today, uh, speaking of one of my favorite topics in the world, so corporate and startup collaboration. And today we are focusing on piloting opportunities, and that's quite quite exciting, and that's what I've been doing the past year at Fortum. Uh, before that, I've been involved in this corporate venturing, open innovation and innovation management for years already, so it's been quite a journey to follow how this area has developed and what are the kind of usual and best practices to work together with the startups from corporate perspective. So I've been in the companies like Veolia, like a huge uh, global player in energy, uh, water and waste management, and then Wärtsilä more recently before joining um, Fortum one year ago. So uh, quite good background on there and also facilitating a lot of uh, corporate uh, venturing projects uh, as a kind of consultant. So seeing a different companies and corporations trying to tackle this issue, how to connect with the best possible companies globally. Great, awesome. Hey, great to have you here, Emmy. And let's get started with the program in this way that we invite the audience to join us for the conversation. And we would like you guys uh, to all go to menti.com. Code is 4077-6628. So go menti.com and then go with this code. And, uh, and, and the question that we ask from the audience, audience is that, uh, what is important when approaching a pilot customer? So, so there is startups online. So what do you guys think that is important when approaching with, uh, with the pilot uh, customers. So Emmy, what kind of uh, thoughts this brings to you? Well, I would say, first of all, timing, and I can open up that a bit more. Uh, and then I already see the word that I was just going to mention. So value proposal, which is the key. And that's what we also want to hear when we uh, reach or approach by, by the startup companies uh, to collaborate. So timing and value proposal. And with timing, what I mean is actually the timing from the startup perspective. And this is something that is a lot to do with resourcing and a kind of growth roadmap. So I would say that think about that when you are thinking about piloting, those might be resource intensive, if it supports really your roadmap to growth, or is, is it really like disturbing something else that you want to do to achieve your growth? So this is always a bit of a timing question also from the startup side. Yeah, yeah, very, very good. And, and, and we can see we have uh, experts online that they, they put out the right things right away. So really great. Uh, so there is uh, good planning, uh, good prospecting. Of course, this all relates to the, the stuff as well and 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 especially I think uh, how do you see like the planning side uh, Emmy? Yeah that's also crucial and really helping our teams at corporations doing this because if the startup is coming with a concrete proposal okay we need from your side this that and that and they say that okay we can do this pilot um, but we need from you for example during this time certain expertise, commenting, whatever it will, might be in the project, uh, good planning is actually really good at helping us to say yes in these proposals. Exactly, yeah. All right, humble attitude. Yeah, of course, it's good, good as a startup to, to be to a little bit extra. <laughs> also from our side. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> 
testing cases where actually then the startup don't want to work with us. So there's humble humbleness needed also from the corporations, not always right. the, not the big kings doing things. <laughs> well said, well said. All right. Okay. A lot of good words and these are actually really good uh, kind of bridge. We are going to talk about this stuff even more uh, in this talk. And I think we're going to go with the talk now forward and, and thank you everybody for joining for this, this uh, word cloud and we move on for the, for the question part. So now I'll be asking questions first from Emmy and after that the audience will have possibility to ask questions. And after, after my questions, I'm just gonna give a short presentation on the Fortum side, what kind of project you do. So, so uh, pay attention online uh, on, on this one as well, so that you, you know, if you are looking to, uh, if, if Fortum could be a good uh, partner for you for your pilots. All right, but hey, Emmy, first question uh, is, is quite general on my side, but what kind of project large companies are interested to do with startups? So what, why, why, what are the motives of large companies to do these things? Yeah, maybe starting from the kind of motivation side, I must say that during the past, maybe six to six years or something, there's been a massive awakening from the corporate side, especially in Nordic countries, which were not the forerunners in, the, in this topic. Um, and this awakening is related to the fact that actually we need to work with startup companies to really keep the competitiveness in the markets. And uh, with that, there is a lot of opportunities, of course, to join forces. And really corporations have embraced and understand that they really need to have um, kind of teams, people allocated for this task and reach out to the external innovation ecosystems to really be uh, up to date with everything that's happening there. And from the piloting project uh, type, I would say usually a good typical project is quite small scale in the beginning. So something quite concrete that is validating the solution and really proving that it's working. And uh, there, of course, the value proposition and then coming to a conclusion if that was really uh, something that works in the real environment, that's kind of the key there. Of course, the projects will vary or depending on the company solution, the maturity and the scale can be so anything from very small thing to bigger one, technological uh, piloting. However, I think the key is really in proving the value proposition that you have just uh, kind of brought to us. Yeah, sounds, sounds, uh, sounds good. And, and, and I think uh, definitely, Definitely, there is uh, uh, what I can see. There's a lot of innovative startups coming out there. So, so, but the focus is one thing that they need to focus on, and and, and especially when when doing pilots, let's have focus and, and 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 use the best of the team that they have in their hands. And so, well, well, well said. Thanks. All right. Uh, all right. Hey, uh, let's jump into the next one. Uh, so, what I have here is a. Uh, so, so we would go into quite concrete stuff. Uh, so how does the process of approaching uh, typically work? So how, how do startups, when, when they're looking for a corporate, so what do they do actually? Like uh, go to LinkedIn, what, what happens there? <laughs> Well, I think uh, typically I've had a kind of innovation or open innovation or something related to startups in my title for years. Mm -hmm. And what I see that every time uh, I post something like that on LinkedIn, uh, maybe change of title, then there's LinkedIn is very good way to actually find the people that you can reach out. However, of course, this is a challenge. And I saw that all of the entrepreneurs on the lines can agree that it's not easy to get an answer from a corporate uh, people in, in general, I mean, because uh, there's so many different units, there are so many different people with the, for example, business development or, or something related to R&D on your title that you would think that, okay, this is the right person. And then you try to reach and it ends up on someone's table. And uh, if they are not exactly on that topic, usually maybe they forward it in the organization, but then it ends up again in the wrong place. So it's a really challenging, challenging place if there is not specific team or person who would be responsible of these type of connections um, like we happily do 
have at Fortum at the moment, for example. But good news in that sense is that now with this uh, a corporate venturing and uh, kind of startup collaboration trending so much, it's becoming a mainstream. So usually you have somewhere on the websites information who to contact in if you are a startup uh, trying to solve like propose your solution. Uh, usually you have someone or some mean to get in touch with these teams. And innovation teams are a good, good way to reach out because usually they are a kind of corporate level support function, which is um, tasked to actually follow all these innovative teams com coming from outside of the corporate. And then they have good networks to really connect to right people in that sense. But I think this is the one, one quite big challenge from a company point of view, like who to contact and how. And maybe my tips would be that if, if you have networks that you could try to get an introduction, for example, Fibon is a great, great way to get an introduction to their partners. So if Antti is sending me an email that, okay, there is this company and I think it's a good match for you, then it's a lot easier to really get these first steps taken. Definitely. It sounds, sounds really logical in that sense. I, I think uh, we're, we're always talking about networking, how important it is. And, and, and of course, angels, they bring this kind of network value. So, so really, really good point uh, there. I, I, I think uh, uh, coming not, not so like a cold contact, it's always better like that sense. And, and really good to hear that the innovating innovation teams in corporate is more trending I think that's really valuable in, in general. Yeah. All right, and, and, and kind of, uh, uh, we touched on this point already, but so, so about the timing. So, so what is a good point for startups uh, to approach? So when it's too early, when it's uh, kind of, uh, they should have already contact, what, what is the point when, when it's a yeah, good that's point? A, that's a good one. And I would actually say that it, it there is no one stage where, when I would say that this is the perfect timing because it's so dependent on the solution that you are proposing. Um, of course, in general, what I've seen over the years, it's easier to try something that is already a bit more mature, like, um, for example, in like challenging technological areas, you need to really have some kind of proof that this might work before maybe taking, taking the first steps as a corporation. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg uh, situation where you really want to try something new, but you don't usually want to be the first one to <laughs> take that risk of uh, if it's working or not. But luckily, this attitude is also a bit changing with these type of uh, pilot pro programs that we, for example, have that we also embrace the failures as such. So saying that, OK, you don't always need to have a perfect uh, end results. And uh, yeah, from... From the, the other side then might be, for example, some software solutions. And uh, there's been cases also at Fortu where we really wanted to find quite early stage partner for these type of things, because then there is a lot more opportunities to impact the development and tailor the solution to our needs, and then really develop it together to something that we want to have. So very open to collaborate with different stage companies. Yeah. Uh, let me touch on that. So, so how actively do you actually uh, uh, look for companies uh, yourself? So do you approach startups as well? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we do a lot of sourcing and scouting activities. Um, it's a bit kind of uh, two-sided in a way that we, as an innovation team or external venturing team, we really look for global markets and try to, for example, be um, active in events and pick up the most promising companies and approach them. Uh, then the other side is that we might have some specific business uh, development needs and then we do more like a scouting project around that and try to find the perfect match and that's usually with some partners or, or something else. So we are really actively doing that. And of course then one way for us is uh, through our venture capital fund collaboration. We have good networks in, in US, Europe and in, in Hong Kong to really try to get the best deal flow globally. So yes, we do actively search for companies in different channels. All right, great to hear. That's awesome. And I'm sure like uh, uh, 
there is a lot of war stories uh, from the startup side who are online as well about uh, what is the point of actually <laughs> contacting uh, uh, the, the, for the pilot. So, so it would be nice if we have time to actually, if somebody wants to share a story there, uh, but let's see if we have time. So, but, uh, what are the common mistakes startup does when reaching to a pilot with the corporate? Well, I think the most common mistakes, if you can call it that, is just kind of really general um, approach with like, okay, this is my company and this is our website. Can we talk type of thing? And okay, this is also good. We get the lead, but it's quite time consuming for our team to try to then figure out what the solution is about. What is the match with Porto? Why did you reach out to us? And what is kind of the competitive landscape and what are the solutions existing there? So in a way, my tip would be to really include already the value proposition basically and the use case that you think that you might have with the corporate that you are approaching. And that's very helpful for our team too. And then, then think not as a maybe mistake, but uh, uh, more like a misunderstanding that is quite common is around the role of innovation teams or innovation um, employees at corporations. And usually, as I previously mentioned briefly, is that we, we are kind of a support function. So we usually cannot do the final decision about piloting, for example. So in these uh, typical pilot projects, it, it's usually quite close to the business unit needs and they are the last ones to say yes or no to the piloting. Uh, of course, there are some topics which might be a bit more future looking or far fetching from that point of view where innovation team then can take a lead, but then there's different processes and it's not a pilot pro project as such, but more like a development or landscaping around the topic and then seeing if we can do something like totally new business there. Uh, so usually we are not the ones to say yes or no uh, in the mm. last there. So we really need to get the buy-in from the business unit representatives. Yeah, exactly. All right. So but uh, when startups are approaching you, uh, what kind of materials they should have? Uh, should they have a pitch presentation and and what kind of materials you, you need to kind of uh, share the information forward? Yeah. So what usually happens is that uh, we get the introductions from someone or the approach from the startup company. And uh, if it's just a one-liner or website, then we start to collect those things by ourselves. So, of course, we want to understand, uh, first of all, what the company is about. But then I think the key things are really the proposal of the use case or use case for the specific industry. And if you don't yet know, for example, Fortum offering so well, but you understand that, okay, we are in the energy sector, then maybe referring to that, that, okay, in typical case in energy sector, we might be able to bring you value by doing this and that. And this is a big problem in, in this sector because X, Y, I. So this is really helping us also to understand what it's all about. Because for me, for example, I've been one year at Fortum. I, of course, learned a lot and I've been involved in the kind of clean tech sector before, but I still must admit that I don't know everything that we do. So if you can already help me to understand how I can then present this uh, solution forward to our business people and say that, okay, this is valuable because they really solve this problem for you. So I would encourage always thinking about this problem solution fit and then the value proposition, which is making then our job a lot easier to take it forward and kind of say yes to the. And then one key thing also what we do uh, in every case is to look at the competitive landscape and who are the other players and how this problem is solved at the moment. So if you already no, of course, you usually know as an entrepreneur your competitors and your market environment very well. That would be very helpful for our team to already have this kind of a overall uh, competitive landscape. And then, of course, stating why your company is the best one to solve this issue. And with this, you are already quite a lot farther away uh, or closer to saying yes than just a one-liner and a website. So. Exactly. That's, uh, that's quite nice to hear because that's exactly what we are looking for when, when we get 
material is approaching to us. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it sounds really logical that uh, you need to understand it. It needs to be really clearly uh, presented to you so that you can actually take the message forward. So. Yeah. And I think one more thing around that is it's a bit different from looking for investors because then you can basically what you can do is prepare your materials, prepare your like finances and send it over to 20 different investors who are usually in interested in uh, similar topics like what is going to be the return on my investment in future. However, for approaching corporations, you always need to go back and say like, okay, what what, what am I really offering to this specific sector or industry? And it can, can be really so general, or it's not good to be so general presentation, I think. Yeah. In a way. And, and one more thing <laughs> would be around yeah. confidential materials. So don't send us confidential materials in the first email. We can take it then later on with <laughs> when NDAs and stuff like that it's signed, is signed. So basically, keep your your confidential material to yourself uh, unless you have an NDA in place just to protect your own properties exactly very important good good that you pointed out all right so uh Amy, could you give us a, a example of a pilot that uh, didn't go maybe so well so let's go for those <laughs> yeah that was quite funny exercise that I did to prepare for this discussion. So I, I was thinking about over the years, different piloting projects or startup collaborations that I've been involved with. And these are not Fortum specific, but really over the years where I've been part of. And the first one that came to my mind was related to a, a pilot with a, a startup company that was found. And it was quite interesting technology. And we really wanted to do a pilot project with them. However, the corporation at the time was not very well prepared for how to work together with the startup. So that meant that, first of all, contracting was really slow and the legal team was sending like tens of pages of documentation for contracting for the startup. And they were like, oh my God, we need to hire a lawyer to really go, <laughs> go through everything. And, and that took forever to send those back and forth. And uh, what happened that meanwhile, that corporation uh, was trying to tackle the legal details. Um, the startup went to the competitor and negotiated the contract, started the pilot and made a successful pilot project during that time when there was still this negotiation about the legal details ongoing. So that was really good learning that of course you need to kind of be be pre prepared and have, uh, for example, simple templates for startup pilots like we do now at the at Fortum. Uh, so it's quite easy, like four page contract, and then we really fast track these projects in our compliance processes and check everything that is needed. So the root cost for course was really not understanding the different levels of um, like, for example, legal teams in corporations are huge and in startups there might not be any any people to do that. So that's one learning definitely over the years. Mm, then maybe another thing that I was thinking was um, one project that was a couple of years ago uh, where uh, um, we wanted to test a quite exciting software and that was presented to us and that sounded really good. Uh, the pricing for the pilot was really attractive. So we were like, okay, yes, let's do this. It's not so expensive. And then we started to do it and get the people involved at the, at the corporation. Then notice that, oh my God, this user experience is horrible. And we had already made the contract with the company. So we kind of missed the step to really have a demo access and try out and then think about if this is really the best one in the markets we want to try out. And finally, that kind of um, not so expensive project ended up taking quite a lot of resources from our side and from the startup side. And then I think in the end, everyone was a bit frustrated that we needed to kind of cancel the scaling of the pilot and not really take it forward due to the fact that it wasn't just on the level that we needed to be or needed it to be uh, before starting something bigger. So that's really something about um, like testing and trying out first uh, in a small group and then ensuring that the uh, benchmarking is done properly. Yeah, Quite really good. Different cases all yeah. around. 
really good examples. Thank you. And and but let's let's get like a like like an example of a good pilot as well. So, what what comes to your mind? Yeah. Well, we have uh, done quite a lot. For example, at Fortum last year we ran or started uh, nine different uh, pilots, and uh, many are still ongoing. So, can't yet say if those were successful or not. But I I could think of maybe two two examples quite recently done. One is around the uh, HR training tool, and this of course had really good momentum because it's a micro learning platform that works totally remotely. And with these Corona times, there's a need of for a huge amount of trainings that are not taking place uh, face to face. So there we were able to get an introduction from one of our trusted investor partner and then uh, have a smaller group piloting the solution at Fortum and uh, then scaling that for three or four different units really taking up the, the platform in use and everything happened in like three months time. So this was really an efficient approach for everyone involved and uh, good results. I think uh, the users were saying like 100% use that more preferred than our existing training tools. So that was a very good good project as such. Um, and then one, one case I want to also highlight is the uh, project that we tried for uh, solar um, power production uh, efficiency. And there the results were not so good in the end, meaning like they didn't get to the efficiency results that were kind of thought or expected in the beginning. However, we learned from that project a lot about the kind of status of our own sites, what we are doing well, what are the gaps, and we still consider this as a very successful one because in the organization everyone was really happy after all, even though the results were not so like monetary results were not so promising as, as thought in the beginning, but they really said that, okay, we are happy that we did this because we learned so much about the topic and the solutions in the market. So this can be also successful, even though it's considered like unsuccessful project in the end. Yeah, all right. Nice to hear those. And we could talk about these pilots uh, for, for way longer, but we have eaten some time from your presentation already. So it would be nice to hear from Fortum now so if you could uh, share your slides and, and and share us a little bit about how Fortum does and what what kind of things you do there okay so what i wanted to first uh, showcase is a bit about uh, Fortum in general i think many of you know us as a nordic electricity provider and that's the really the key for us but during the past uh, years we've got, gone through a major transformation with a lot of investments in our core offering, but also big investments like the Uniper uh, subsidiary that we now have, which is actually a huge transformation in-house in also, because we need to really combine the two big players. And with that and the recent other investments, we are now the third largest CO2 free power generator in Europe. So really expanding from the Nordic markets to the whole Europe and growing, growing there all the time. And what it means really in practice is that we have really ambitious um, goals to transition to this net zero carbon future, which is of course requiring a lot from the power system in general and then all the other parts of these value chains and, and solutions that there are at the moment. So a lot of development is needed from uh, existing portfolio point of view, but also kind of totally new blocks need to be added to this power system to really make it work in future. And this is, of course, good news from innovation and venturing point of view, because there is a huge pressure to really decarbonize the whole energy um, environment, which means that we need a lot of innovations and a lot of new technologies a lot of piloting in different parts of these value chains to really ensure that we have the latest and the most prominent technologies in use. So that's kind of the overall big picture. And as I already spoke a bit about the innovation team role in corporations, um, it's just to kind of uh, highlight again that usually in most of the cases, the innovation teams are really support functions, making sure that all the business units have the means and tools that they need for really finding and applying the new technologies and different topics. 
they want to investigate in the innovation scene. So that's really our role to facilitate all these projects and make things happen. And today I'm focusing more on this startup collaboration side. So we do have a lot of activities in innovation team in the wider team. Uh, I'm in the external venturing team. And here you can see our main activities that we do to support uh, Fortum to grow and uh, renew really. And I think it's overall about kind of changing the clock speed of renew. Also, we really need to be faster in, uh, in finding these new solutions and taking those in use. And the uh, main tools for that really is the startup piloting that we've been discussing already a lot. And there we really want to find and introduce the most promising and most relevant companies to our, our business units and the needs that we have. And there also, I've been talking a lot about the business unit buy-in and all that. However, we are, of course, interested in kind of future uh, new business opportunities, definitely. So that's then a bit different way maybe to make it happen, because uh, these pilot projects are usually quite close to our current offering. Uh, in the middle, you see the fund investments, and that's something we do to really widen our own um, global REITs. So we have in US, Valo Ventures, where we invested. In Europe, we work together with Energy Impact Partners. And then we have one fund in Hong Kong, where we collaborate to really get the insights from the markets in different parts of the world. And then also, of course, deal flow is very important part of that. And then we, of course, have the possibility to invest in startups. Um, either directly from the business units, if it's very, very uh, strategically important topic and company. But then we have also launched this Valkea Growth Club that was mentioned uh, in the beginning. So at Maria 01, there is actually premises and a working place for anyone to join. And there we can do also smaller investments, I would say from 100,000 up to 1 million euros uh, seed, pre-seed or series A, usually with the co-investors uh, to support the companies that are really in the core of our strategic uh, plans. So a lot of different ways to really make these collaboration happen. Mm. And yeah, the motivation also came, came a bit in the beginning, but really we see this adaptation of the new technologies in our, our core businesses as a billion euro question. And for us, it means really two things. So faster renewal and this operative value that we gain from these different technologies. But then again, as the one example of these uh, so-called successful projects, projects uh, where it's also about the organizational learning and the innovation mindset in the corporations or that we can really create the capabilities and understanding in business units, how to work together with innovators. And to summarize, maybe the typical pilot project, those would be short practical tests of different products or services and uh, typically two to six months and maybe um, up to 50k euros uh, in cost. And we always also want to be kind of this venture client model that we do. So we want to be fair and also value your time as an entrepreneur. So we are not expecting you to do something for free for us. That's one, one important thing for, for us. And uh, just to highlight a bit the focus areas, we have uh, several business units, several different things that we are doing. And uh, there's a strong focus on digital innovation at the moment. So if you have a solution that is touching any of these topics that you see here, we are more than happy to discuss. And maybe one point to highlight here is also the not so well-known part of Fortum business, which is this recycling and waste management. So there we have a lot of needs for innovation that's mainly focusing on hazardous waste and for, like, for example, like battery uh, recycling is one very important topic there. But yeah, uh, easy way to get in touch with us, um, be in touch with me directly, it's emmy.kaipio at fortum.com, or then we have this site fortum.com slash startups where you or anyone else can just send a 
proposals as discussed and described to us uh, through a web form. So that's a very good way to get directly in touch with our team. Thank you. A lot of concrete, concrete stuff and, and nice to see actually Fortum.com slash startup. That's like, this is, uh, you, you've taken it seriously. So this is, this is really nice to see. All right, hey, uh, now it's time for the questions from the audience. And, uh, and in the meanwhile, when we ask for, uh, wait for the questions, Emmy, I would like to ask you like a final question. Uh, so uh, how, like, Let's talk in general with pressing all these things that great tips that you have given how to do a proposal where it's easy to say yes. So the kind of last tips on that. Yes, so indeed, uh, maybe already a couple of times mentioned here, but focus on the problem solution fit and the value proposal, because that's really making it easier for us. Also, what is very helpful, what I got a couple of times is someone actually thinking about already like who am I helping helping in a corporation like Fortum. So for example, saying that usually we are working together with uh, the um, like a trading and asset optimization team and this and that type of person. If you have experience from, for example, similar sector corporations and uh, you already know a bit like who would be the perfect match from the business because that's the first step that we always are doing that. We have a network of people all around Fortum and in our businesses, but we can't know everyone in person. So then we need to really go into the uh, organization and see like who is the one who would be getting really excited about this solution. So that's, that's one quite important thing. And then, yeah, these basic things of uh, solution and what problem you are really solving and who would be very helpful there. Yeah, awesome. All right, uh, I think uh, we have one question there from Steve uh, Jackson. Uh, good memorium, me, me, memorandums uh, of understanding and a simple NDA help that legal process. Very light, but protecting IP on both sides. Yes, indeed, if I get the point, there, uh, what I can say we, we've done at Fortum is we have prepared all these um, documentation in a very simple form so that it's uh, quite easy to go through as a startup also. And then we have a fast track process in-house. So if we have a startup pilot, it's not going to the full corporate purchasing uh, compliance pro process, but we really have these specific people who are then quickly checking the cybersecurity issues, the IP, NDAs, and uh, the contracting. And for contract, uh, we've come to the maybe four page contract, which is covering the pilot projects. And that's be quite uh, easy to handle also from the startup point of view. So definitely agree that this simple uh, NDA is also something that we use in our projects. Awesome. All right, then there is uh, another question from Sami. Uh, what kind of internal KPIs slash targets do you have as innovation team in a big corporate? Really good question. Yeah, this is an interesting question and also something we've been brainstorming a lot <laughs> <laughs> lately and also every year as a part of our our uh, like uh, discussions and planning for the for the year. Uh, we are measuring uh, uh, different things, uh, for example, the volume of uh, piloting that we do, but not only that, but also the quality. So how many companies we kind of work together and which lead to really successful, measurable, uh, concrete results. But then, as I discussed, there, there's this um, um, Kind of softer side that is more difficult to measure so how do we measure for example the organizational learning in in fortum to really see that we reach many people in the corporation and brought these different innovation projects there so that's a very challenging area because of course we don't just want to measure for example the amount of companies we work together because that would then encourage to have just many projects which are not resulting in in maybe good results so definitely a topic to explore a lot. Awesome. And, uh, and please, everybody, if you have any questions, you go ahead and write them on chat. 
uh, we can take them from there. Uh, since you have a great, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's an appropriate question to ask, but I will do it <laughs> anyways. But since you have a great startup team uh, in Fortum, uh, is there any similar um, uh, companies who have similar kind of units as yours? And, and do you benchmark some other companies as well? Absolutely. So yes, there are definitely a lot of uh, corporations that have specific units. Um, Usually those are like corporate venturing or corporate venture capital units that also have the mandate to do this type of uh, uh, wider projects and piloting. And what we do for benchmarking, for example, that we are part of this um, um, group of limited partners in Energy Impact Partners Venture Capital Fund. And there the other LPs are all also energy industry players who are working together with startups and investing in startups. So that's one concrete way that how we really benchmark and discuss with different companies. And what I've noticed over the years is that it's actually quite easy to share best practices between corporations. Even though you are a competitor, you can still talk about in general, like, okay, this is our ways of working in venturing. This is our innovation process. And this is how we handle these problems. Because those are always the same challenges that... <laughs> corporations usually have and it's very good to say like okay this is how we fixed for example this um, trouble of finding the right people and getting them resource for the projects so definitely oh so, yeah all right and and I guess we are we are kind of getting to the end so no more questions please but uh, we have a poll for the audience here so, so it should be coming to your, uh, your screen right about now. Ah, okay, we're going, uh, it's in the chat. So, so you can find it from there. So what topic are you most inter interested to hear more conversation on? So put A, B, C, D, E, so A for exit, uh, B for internationalization, C for sales, D for marketing, E for something else. So please share, everybody just put, Put there so we can we can uh, so the idea with this is of course that we want to deliver content that you want to hear about but we're waiting for everybody to answer go ahead you can answer more than one but Emmy it was super awesome having you here we, we I think uh, there's so much uh, valuable uh, message that you brought everybody will definitely uh, remember uh, the, the, the value proposal if if that's the most important, I guess, I think it came many times. Uh, it was great having you, Emmy, here uh, joining us and, 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 and people have your contact information already as well. So be in touch with Emmy uh, if, you, if you're interested of in having a pilot with Fortum. 